This video is on pitching a song using shape notes. Lesson one, songs that start on do. All right. First, let's look at a definition of pitch. Definition of pitch is the highness or lowness of a tone. Um, when leading congregational singing, uh, pitching the song is probably if not the most important, it is definitely one of the most important things that needs to happen from the song leader. Um, if the song is pitched too high, then the sopranos and tenors are going to have a hard time singing. If it's pitched too low, the basses and altos are going to have a hard time singing. And uh, pitch is very important. So in this video, we're going to learn how to uh, pitch a song, and this will be lesson one. We'll have a lesson two that will follow as well in another video. First, um, in the title, it says pitching a song uh, using shape notes. Um, most of the of the hymn books that we use um, do have do use shape notes, and here's an example of a song that is in round notes. Some hymn books are written with round notes. So the, the so the tech the methods that we are looking at in this video does not work if the book or the songs that you're looking at are in round notes. These only apply when you've got shape notes. All right. So here's the same song with notes, the shape notes. So notice um, all these notes in here. They're not all round. Now you've got a couple of them that are round there, but they all have shapes to them. All right, these are these are shape notes. Again, most of the hymn books that we use do have shape notes in those. Shape notes make it very easy to determine what the what the key of the song is, and then helping us to pitch the song and start it out in a good key, in the correct key. All right, so we need to first learn um, the absolute what what the, the absolute pitches are because you know to pitch a song we've got to use a pitch instrument and notice um, the absolute pitches are just the first seven letters of the alphabet A B C D E F G and then the next note after G would go back to A and then B C D E F G and then A so it just repeats over and over again all right so those are absolute pitches and that's what we've got to, to learn um, when we look at a song which of these do we need to, to blow or uh, hit on our pitch instrument. All right. Here are some examples of pitch instruments. All right, this, this is an example here of just of a pitch pipe. So notice you've got the A, B, C, D, E, F, G around it. Uh, you also have it written on the top there. Okay, so we've got to know which of those to blow. All right. Also, a newer type of pitch instrument is uh, this uh, electronic one where you just mash the button and then it, and it does the pitch. You have to have a battery in this one. All right, for the pitch pipe, you've got to blow it, but that one you got to be sure your battery is working, but you have all the pitches there. Also, uh, here is a, a tuning fork. All right, and they, this is a newer one that, they're, that uh, someone is making now that is an adjustable tuning fork where you pull this up and down and you find the pitch on there and you hit the tuning fork and listen to it and that tells you the pitch. Um, so again, we've got to figure out well, how do you figure out, how, how do you know which pitch to blow or to, to hit uh, to help you start the song. Alright, so we need to go through a little bit of, just a little bit of theory first uh, to kind of um, be able to get to the point where we can determine uh, what key the song is in and what, what pitch to, to blow. All right, so, so let's go through this. Pitches are given letter names, the first seven letters of the alphabet, like we said a while ago, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are called absolute pitches because they are absolute and do not change. Okay. Pitch is notated in music on a staff. A staff consists of five lines and four spaces. So, uh, in your in, in a hymn, you're gonna have words in the middle, and then usually you have a staff above it and a staff below it. A staff 
does not show pitch unless a clef is placed on the staff. Normally we have two clefs that we use as far as our as far as uh, hymns go. Uh, treble clef looks like this one. Bass clef look like, looks like this one. Um, treble clef is usually going to just be the sopranos and altos and that's going to be on the top. Bass clef is where the notes for the tenors and basses will be and that's on the bottom. For what we're doing in this video, we're only going to look at the treble clef. Because if you're leading a song, normally you do sing the melody, which is the top line of, of notes, and that's always in the treble clef. So we're only going to look at the treble clef as far as pitch goes. The treble clef is also called the G clef because it defines the second line as the pitch G. So this second line is G. All right. Notes can be white or black and may have stems and flags depending on rhythm. The placement of the note head on a line or space defines the pitch of the note. Okay, so notice here the note head is on the line. So when we get ready in a minute to know what these lines are, um, notice the note is in the center of the line. That is when you can say the note is on the line. All right. Note head is on a space. Here's an example here. The note is between the line above and below the space. So here that note would be on the third space. This note here would be on the third line. Pitch names are assigned in ascending order from A to G and then starting over with A alternating from line to space. So here this shows uh, you've got a note on a line as E. That note is on the next space F, the next line G, the next line, the next space A, the next line B, so on and so forth. C, D, E, F, all the way up there. Ledger lines can be added above or below the staff like this, and you can just continue going up by step, either above or below. So here would be a more complete treble clef with pitches. So notice we have E, and then below the, the E line we can go down to D, and then add a ledger line there. We've got C. Also we can keep going up here, keep going above the staff if we want to. All right. Now, what we need to be able to do to pitch a song is, is look at a note on this treble clef and know what that letter name is of the song. All right. So here's a mnemonic device that is used always, just about, to remember the pitch names of the lines and spaces for the treble clef. All right. So notice the lines uh, from the bottom up. If you can remember, every good boy does fine. Those start with E, G, B, D, F. That is the lines of the treble clef. E, G, B, D, F. Every good boy does fine. All right. The uh, spaces spell the word face. F, A, C, E. From the bottom to the top. So every good boy does fine. Face. Now, uh, sometimes we, we want to say D face because um, a lot of times, um, we say deface because a lot of times our note that we're looking at is going to be below this line. So let's add a D right here. All right, so D and then face. So the, the so the space below the bottom line is going to be D. So every good boy does fine. Deface. All right, another couple things we need to, to be familiar with as far as pitch goes and pitching the songs is we do have sharps and flats in music. Um, a sharp looks like that. It raises the pitch of a note one half step. A flat looks like that and it lowers the pitch of a note one half step. So notice on our pitch instrument you've got your letter, the letters all around this but you also have these um, sharps and flats between them. Okay, so when you're pitching a song, all right, with the way that that, that we're going to do it as far as hymns go, 
you really will never need to blow a sharp. Like you'll never need to think of a key as being A sharp or G sharp. Okay. You will though sometimes have keys that are where you have a pitch name that's flat, like B flat, A flat, E flat, D flat. Uh, so notice on here, here's B. All right, well B flat will be that one right there. So if I'm going to blow a B flat, I'll blow this, which is B flat. Now that's actually the same note as A sharp. But again, all, we're, all we do as far as key goes is just going to be pitches that are flat. If I'm going to blow A, I blow the, blow the note right there. If I'm going to blow A flat, A flat is right here, then I blow that, that one right there. Uh, e, if I blow, if I have to, if I have a key in E, I blow that one. E flat is going to be right below it, right there. All right. So whatever kind of pitch instrument you got, you need to you need to get that figured out. But we don't we don't need the ones that are sharp. Like we don't need to think of A sharp. We'll need to do A flat or B flat or or E flat or D flat. Alright, next is going to be our relative pitches, and this is where the shape notes come in. Uh, here, this is an outline of all the shapes in the, in the shape note scale. Relative pitches are pitches that change depending on the key of the song. So these are going to be in different places in, in each song depending on whatever the key of that song is in. Alright, now all that we're going to worry with in this lesson is just the do. All right, so notice this is Do. Do is shaped like a pyramid, okay? Remember that shape, okay? Um, songs that are in uh, major keys, which, is, which are most of the ones that we sing, uh, the Do is always the key note. So if you can, fi if you can find Do in the song and know what uh, the absolute pitch that Do is on, then you've got the key of the song. And that's the key to pitching it. So Do, remember what Do looks like? And that's going to help us pitch the songs. All right, so here's our steps to pitching a song. That begins on Do. So we're limiting this to only songs um, that begin on Do. All right, number one, find the key of the song by finding the Do. And again, like I just said, in a major key, Do is always on the pitch that is the key of the song. So find the, the letter name uh, wherever Do is at. Next, number two, determine if the key note should be flatted or not by using what we call the rule. All right. Here is the rule. The rule is more than one flat is flat and everything else is natural. Okay. Now what this means is, is that if you find the key, then you've got to look at what's called the key signature, which is at the beginning of the song. And I'll show you the example of that in just a minute. If the key signature has more than one flat in it, then you flat the key note. If it has one flat, no accidentals, or sharps in the key signature, you leave the key note natural. You leave it what it is. If it's A and you don't have more than one flat, then you leave it A, just A natural. Number three, blow the key note and start the song. Sometimes you have to decide if the key note is high or low, and we'll do a few examples of that. All right, let's look at a few songs here. All right, so this one, um, notice we need to find the Do, and all these that, that we're doing in this lesson the first note is Do that you're, that you're singing. So notice here's the Do there. There's a Do. Everywhere throughout the song, Do is going to be in the same place. And this one, it's always on the second line from the bottom. So it's on the second line. Remember the lines are every good boy does fine. So that is going to be a G. Alright. So the key of this song is G. Next, I need to know, do I need to leave it G or do I need to make it flat? 
look at the key signature. The key signature is what is going to be right here between this treble clef sign and this time signature. Right, this is your key signature. Notice in this key signature you have a sharp. Okay. Now you're never going to have sharps and flats mixed in a key signature. You're either going to have flats or sharps or either no flats or sharps. If your sharps are in the key signature, you just leave the note what it is. This key of this song is G. The first note is Do, so if I'm going to start this one, I just find G. And then I'm going to hum it. And then I start singing. What can wash away my sin? And then go from there. Let's do another one. All right. Notice on this one, let's find Do. And again, all these, Do is the first note. There's Do. All right. Do is on the third space from the bottom. So notice with the spaces, they spell the word face. If you go below, you've got D. So F, A, C. That note is a C. All right. Now, here you've got to decide do I, on my pitch instrument, do I, so mine that, on my pitch pipe that I've got, I have a low C and a high C. Alright, this is low C. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I'm sorry, I, I didn't, we didn't look at the rule. I look at the rule first before I do that. Uh, notice this key signature here, there is nothing between the treble clef and the, and the uh, time signature. There are no flats or sharps in the key signature. The rule is more than one flat is flat, everything else is natural. So since this is not more than one flat, it's the key is just C. All right. Now, is it going to be high C or low C? Well, notice this C is higher up in the treble clef. All right. and then, let me go ahead and skip to this next song. I think I have one now in the low. Yeah, all right, notice this one. Um, the note is way down here in the bottom. Now there's the Do. If you're not familiar with, with what that is, if you go down here to the second line, Do goes up here. And notice again, we're on the third space from the bottom, F, A, C. Notice there are no flats or sharps in the key signature. So therefore, it's the key is C natural. All right. So notice this C is low. In the other song, the C is high. So for this one, what I would want to do, I don't want to start it down low, because if I blow this one, mm, wonderful story of love, that's going to be too low. All right, so I need to go up to this one. Mm, wonderful story of love, and start up there, or I could blow the low one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then go up to it. Wonderful story of love. And then go from there. Alright. This one, notice, the C is low. So I don't want to start up here. Mm -hmm, in the desert of sorrow and sin. That's going to be way too high. Alright, so I need to start down low. Mm -hmm. In the desert of sorrow and sin. Then I go from there. All right, let's do another one. All right. The Do, here it is. All right, notice the Do is on the second space. So remember the space is spelled F-A-C-E from the bottom. So that is on A. All right. Now let's look at the rule. The rule is, look at the key signature, which is between the treble clef and the time signature. All right, if that key signature has more than one flat, then I need to flat the key. Well, notice here I've got one, two, three, four flats. I've got more than one flat. So I, this, is, this key is actually going to be A flat. So on my pitch pipe, or my pitch instrument, I need to, to blow A flat. Mm, and start the song. Time is filled with swift transition. 
right now look at the next one All right. notice this one here's the dough it is also on the second space from the bottom it's on A so F A now look at the key signature there's your treble clef and your time signature here is your here is your uh, key signature the rule says if there is more than one flat then it's flat everything else is natural this has sharps this doesn't have any flats in it so that means the key is just going to be a natural for this one all right so I blow a natural mm -hmm. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. And then go from there. Alright, let's go to another one. Alright. Again, here's Do. Alright, Do here is on the bottom line. Alright, remember the lines, but is the lines are every good boy does fine. So the bottom line would be E. So I know we've got E. All right, look at your uh, uh, key signature. All right, so between the treble clef and your time signature is your key signature. All right, the rule says um, more than one flat is flat. Everything else is natural. This has no flats in it. It's only sharps. So that is just going to be E natural for the key. Blow an E. <coughs> Alright, here's another one. All right, notice this one is on the bottom, the dough is on the bottom line as well. E, every good boy does fine. Notice on this one though, in the key signature, we do have flats. So, the rule is more than one flat is flat, everything else is natural. Well, here I've got three flats. So that means my key is E flat. Here I labor and toil as I look for a home. All right. All right. This one, here's the dough. Notice on this one, the dough is on the first space. The spaces spell the word face. So that this note is on F. So, so we got F. All right, look at the key signature. The rule says more than one flat is flat. Everything else is natural. This is one flat, not more than one flat. So since it's not more than one flat, we leave the key natural. So one, if, if one flat's in the key signature, the key is always F, not F flat, just F. All right, so let's blow the F. <laughs> Mm, they tried my Lord. All right. All right. Here, there's Do. All right. That's the space below the lines. Remember, we said D face. So if if the bottom one is bottom space is F, that one is D. All right. You also could go over here. There's a higher one. Uh, every good boy does. That's D as well. All right. Click at the key signature. You got sharps in the key signature. So the rule says more than one flat's flat. Everything else is natural. So this key is D natural. So I'd blow D. Mm. Come, let us all unite to sing. All right, this one, the dough is up on that fourth line, which is also every good boy does is D. All right, but notice on, and then again, key signature, you've got sharps. So this is the key of D, just like the last song. But notice on the last song, we started down low. Mm. Come, let us all unite to sing. All right, this one, though, we don't want to start down there. 
If I blow D, mm, that's low. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. That's way too low. So you would have to go blow your D, and then go up to the upper, to the higher D. So go, mm, 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 and start there. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Right, these next two are, are similar. All right, here you've got this is the dough. It is the space below the bottom line, so that's D, D face. Your key signature on this one though does have flats in it, and you do have more than one flat. So this key is D flat. All right, but notice here the dough is low. On the next one. Same thing, the dough is, but the dough is high. It is D. You got flats, so it's D flat. So this one starts up high, the other one starts low. So if I'm going to blow a D flat on my pitch pipe. Mm. Once I stood in the night, so and so forth. And then for this one, though, I would have to go up high. Onward rejoicing, I tread life's way. I think we just have about two more here, or three. All right, notice this one. Here's the do. That is on the third line from the bottom. Every good boy. B. Look at the key signature. More than one flat is flat. I have more than one flat. So this key is B flat. Mm. Sing me a song about Jesus. This is a song you may not be familiar with. You may be. But uh, it's just an example of the same type thing as the last couple of sets of songs that we did. Uh, we, here you've got B flat, the note is in the middle there, hmm. but here it starts out low. The dough is low. Um, if we go down, you can find a dough. Uh, well, you have to look later. The dough is going to be on the B again up here. You might have to look on into the song a little farther than what I've got on here. but. Uh, to about more than one flat. So this key is also B flat, but the B flat is low. So this one I would have to go. <laughs> they all walked away, nothing to say. All right.